Hello everyone, so good to have you back at House of Refuge Church and Pastor James Jeffries. And we're going to continue on to part three. Jesus is looking at your heart and what does he see? Okay. And now we're in Matthew 13. We're also in Luke chapter 8. And when it says in Matthew 13, he told many stories in the form of parables such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rocks. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon withered under the heat, under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So, and once again, we'll say this on the other parts, who is the farmer? In Matthew 13, 37, it says, Jesus replied, the Son of Man is, is the farmer who plants the good seed, okay? And what is the seed? In Luke 8, 11, it says, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. So, the seed is God's word, and the farmer is Jesus, okay? Matthew 13, 7 is the part we're on right now. And the seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants, okay? And in the Luke's Gospel, it says almost the same thing. It just adds one, one thing to it. And the seed fell among thorns that grew up with, with it and choked out the tender plants. So with one of them, it looks like the seed's coming from an outside source, okay? Just weeds coming up. But with the other one, it looks like, in Luke, it looks like they planted the, the other seed, when they planted the good seed, okay? So it wasn't Jesus that sowed the weeds, okay? But it was stuff that was already in a person's heart. We're going to see that in just a minute, okay? So the Lord, he only planted the good seed. But it was, it was grown in the, in the midst of weeds that were already growing inside of a person's heart, okay? Matthew 13, 22, we get the interpretation it says, the seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. Okay? And then Luke 8, 14, which is interpretation over in the book of Luke, the seeds that fell among thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow into maturity. So a little different, so they, but we combine the two together and we can get a little bit more insight to the, the heart of, of this kind of person. Now number one, these people hear the message and become Christians, but they have a problem, okay? Now here's the problem that they're having is found in James 1, 22 through 25, and it says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in the mirror, for he looks at himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful um, hearer, but, but one who does good works, this person will be blessed in what he does. Okay, So James is talking about good works. Now, a Christian who, um, who is busy doing good works is going to get blessed. There's going to be an increase in crops. All right, a person goes out and sows the seed, and then he pulls the weeds up. He's going to get an incredible um, good, 
good um, amount of harvest. We're going to do that one next week. But on this one, they didn't do anything like that. It just, the, the, the seed just wouldn't do anything. So we'll see that. So the person here we're talking about now, this is Christians. All right? This is Christians. This is a person who actually gets saved. And the word of God is sowed into that person's heart. But they still having this love for this world. And so they're not doing anything about this. And, but they're still Christians. Okay? But we're going to look at some things about these Christians. And, uh, and why and what is going on inside of their heart. Okay? Uh, number two. They don't have any room in their hearts. So the message has no room to grow. So it just, it's a little plant. It grows as much as it can. The other plants are taking away moisture, taking away fertilizer. So it's only growing so much. And, um, and so it's just, it remains small. So, and here's a sad thing too. It's like, I know a lot of Christians who's old, old in the Lord. They've been saved for years. But their understanding isn't any, hasn't grown much past salvation. There's so much more truth in God's word, but they don't know it because we're going to see in just a minute. In 1 Peter 3.15, this is in the Amplified Classic Bible, but in your hearts set Christ apart as holy. Now in other translations it says, some, it uses other words, one of them is sanctify, that means set apart. Okay, so we are to sanctify or set apart Christ in our heart. He should be the dominating factor in us. The, the plant that gets all the attention, okay? And acknowledge him as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you. But do it courteously and respectfully. So in other words, you see, if this plant is growing inside of us, the seed is growing, the good word of God, then we want other people to be saved. We want other people to know the truth. So it's priority inside of us. Yeah, we're busy doing other things. You know, we go on vacation. We, we plant gardens. We, we, uh, we work at a job and, and we make a living and on and on the things we do. But that isn't priority. When you become a Christian, what is priority is Jesus Christ. This, the seed that's sown of the Word of God is priority inside of you. Over every word, heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God will not pass away. Okay? So, and right here it's telling us how we have to sanctify. So we got to push everything else out. Or, you know, we, we still have loves. I love my wife, I love my kids, I love my grandsons. But they cannot, they cannot be in the center of my love. My love has got to be totally devoted to Jesus Christ. And the more that it is, the more I love them. The more that it is, the more I love people. The more that Christ in me begins to bear fruit inside of me, the more I begin to want people to go to heaven. That's my priority, okay? Number three... Their hearts are crowded out with worries. You know, that's what I notice in the church a lot. They're worried about everything. They, they were worried about COVID. They were worried about the flu. They worry about the finance. They worry about our country. They worried about everything that's going on. Okay? So their hearts are crowded out with worries. In Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. So if you're going to look at things in this world, you're going to worry. Fear is going to grip your heart. And it's going to be those weeds of fear are going to snuff out that precious fruit. Okay? So you're beginning to starve to death because you don't have any fruit. We're going to see that in just a second. Because other things have taken the precious fertilizer, the precious water that's, that was meant strictly to nurture the Word of God in your heart. You see, so if we walk by faith and we look at this world, then we will know the Lord said he will never leave us or forsake us. He said, I will be with you to the ends of your life. Okay, so these are the things we are to build ourselves up in our most holy faith that we walk in. The scriptures have got to become alive inside of you. The word of God. 
It must grow inside of you so that you will not panic, not be fearful. You know, you go to the doctor and he gives you a bad report. And you should, you should respond with, no worry about that. You know, if I, if I do die of this, whatever it is, I'm going to go to heaven. But if he wants me to be here and continue to do a work for him, then he'll heal me. Or whatever it is, we'll go into remission, okay? So we walk by faith, not by sight. All right? Uh, number four, their hearts are crowded with riches and pleasures of this life. It's just snuffing out the Word of God. 2 Timothy 3 says this, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, Paul wrote this to Timothy, that's why it says he's talking to Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. You know, well, it doesn't mean that everybody will. You know, the true, the true believer is not loving themselves, they're loving people. And they're not loving their money to keep piling it up in the bank. They're using it to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, to keep the, the uh, ministry of God's word going in the, in the world. So they, they bless missionaries, they, they bless the church, and so forth. Okay? But Paul, uh, Paul told Timothy that they're going to be lovers of themselves, more than lovers of their money. So if you sit, if I don't sit down with a person, a Christian, and let them talk, okay, we have a conversation, I pay attention to how much do they talk about themselves, okay, and I pay attention to how much they're focused on either having money or not having money. And you can see that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth's going to speak. So it's, that person's going to tell me in conversation what's in their heart. You know, if a person's just talking about themselves all the time, telling me about their troubles, their physical problems, and, and uh, everything else that's going on, and then I'm in conversation again and again and again, and they keep bringing that up, keep bringing that up, and, you know, then it's, it's pretty obvious that instead of Christ being centered in their heart, it's themselves. They're sitting on the throne of their hearts, and it isn't Jesus, okay? He's there because they're a Christian, but he's not Lord of their lives, okay? So they got to get their minds off of themselves. If they live, they live for the Lord. If they die, they die for the Lord. Either way, whether they live or whether they die, we belong to the Lord. That's what Paul said. 2 Timothy 3, 4 and 5 says, They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and they will love pleasure rather than God, okay? They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. And Paul told Timothy, stay away from, from people like that, okay? Pretty, pretty much he's saying, don't be staying in conversation with people like that. You need to be in conversation with the Holy Spirit. You need to be listening to Him and worshiping and praising Him and giving God all the glory and worshiping the Father in spirit and truth, okay? But this kind of people, man, they're in the church. They, um, they, they gladly receive the word, but they're not growing in the word, okay? Because the message has no room to grow, it will not produce fruit. But what is fruit, okay? Well, let me give you a scripture here in Luke 13. It's a story. It's a parable. And it says, he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. Okay? Well, this is a picture this is a picture of what happens to a person that has no fruit, all right? I mean, hey, it's right there. And I think it's the father saying, cut, cut it down. Just, just kick them out. That's what he would be saying. I don't know if it would be actually that way. But then Jesus would be saying, give me a little more time with this Christian. Now, that one, that one year could be a very long time, okay? 
but he is working on Christians to do good works, to stop complaining, to stop hanging around with unsaved, and that's all you're doing is coming to agreement with what they're griping on. But to be ready in season, I see to tell the hope that we have in this. Okay, so so right here you see that this fig tree for three years it wasn't bearing any fruit, and he's saying, man, why should we hog up space here? That make room for a tree that bears fruit. Okay, well in the kingdom of heaven, this is why Jesus told a parable. It's pretty obvious he's talking about Israel, that Israel was not bearing any fruit. Okay. And so he was like, let's remove them and let's set the church up. Let's put, let's put the church in there to bear fruit. Okay? So that's what's, that's what's going on here. Look, we all Christians, we need to be bearing fruit. Good works. You know, I mean, out of your mouth, you're speaking. What are you speaking? We need to be speaking words that edify. Words that lift up. We need to be encouraging each other. See, that's good fruit. See, we're the, we're the branches on a tree. John 15 says he's the vine and we're the branches. And every branch that doesn't bear any fruit, it's cut off and thrown in a fire. But every branch that bears fruit, it's pruned. He prunes it so it bears more fruit. You need to go read those first uh, seven to eight scriptures there in, in uh, the Gospel of John chapter 15. And you see what I'm talking about. You know, so, so if you're all bearing fruit, he's going to want to purge things out of your life. Like, you know, he wants you to stop talking trash. He wants you to start talking the Word of God. And words that edify and lift up and encourage. That's what he wants you to talk, okay? He wants you to forgive. If you're not forgiving, that's a big no right there. You're not going to bear any fruit. You need to forgive. If you're trying to give an offering, the Lord's not receiving it. He says, leave it at the altar and go get right with the person that you need to walk in forgiveness with. You need to quit blaming people because of your shortcomings, okay? Uh, God sees and hears what you're doing and what you're saying in the secret of your own home. He's listening. And if you're wondering why things that seem to be going south for you or going bad, it may be what you're saying in secret. Every idle word that a man speaks in secret, he will pay account to that on the day of judgment. Okay, so we need to bear good fruit. All right, so we need to start absorbing the fertilizer from heaven, his truth, which will fertilize you to stop doing what you're doing. We need to uproot some things in our heart. We need to deliberately say, what I've been talking about, people I've been judging is evil and wrong. Lord, deliver me from this, and the Lord will. And then you'll start bearing some good fruit. And number six, because the heart of these people are too busy doing their own things and give little to no time reading and studying God's word, they never mature. They always will be stifled. Years and years ago by, and they're still talking like babies, baby Christians. And this is a shame, because they should be mature. They should be growing up and be teachers and helping people, and being a light to their family and everything. They should be changing and being transformed in the renewing of their minds, it says in Romans 12, okay? So we need to be renewed. We need to be talking on what is holy and what is righteous. So let me show you these last scriptures here, and then I'll close. Second Peter 1, 3 through 9, say this. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the one who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous and glory, marvelous glory and excellence. So right off the bat, He's given you everything you need. He's given you fertilizer and water. He's given you great, great promises and truth, okay? And you need a study to know what the promises are. So that when you're going through something, you can speak the scripture instead of complaining about the problem, okay? Number four, <clears throat> and because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires, all right? 
So if you want to get break free from these temptations, you need to know the promises of God. There's thousands of them. Get you a good promise book. I've said that so many times in the messages. Read the promises pertaining. They got different chapters. One on, on money, one on healing, one, and on and on it goes. And they give you scriptures to stand on, to speak, to memorize, to speak those scriptures instead of speaking the problem. Okay? And, uh, and it says, in view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. And moral excellence with knowledge. <clears throat> okay? And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with patient endurance. And patient endurance with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. Now notice this. This is adding to your life all of these different attributes. So that this is all fruit growing on you and in your heart. And it manifests out in your life. Okay? So others can eat the fruit. They can come to you and they can find that rest and peace in your words. And you'll pray for them when they're going through something. And they know that. And they look into you to, to give them something to eat. Okay? Some of this. You need to go study that. You see? That's what I was talking about. Verse 8. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Now, I like this last part because you notice these are Christians he's talking about. And this is the ones that we're talking about right now in, in, in this particular part. Okay? They have allowed the lust of this world and the pride of life and, 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 and going after riches and all of this to just stifle the growth. And then after a while, they totally forget. They forget about how they repented and the Lord has washed them clean. And now all they think about is the stuff that's growing around them. That's not bearing any fruit in their life. And if they're not careful, they'll eventually come to a place that the Lord might cut them out. They cut, and the Lord cut Israel out, and he warns us in Romans that he can cut us out too. So we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful that we remain in the trunk of the tree, to remain in the vine, okay? And so we need to study. You need to study the promises. Go read them. Get a promise book and find out what great promises you have. Get your, get your mind off of yourself. Walk in forgiveness. Don't be blaming somebody because of the problems you're having. Because it wasn't that person that caused the problem to begin with. It was what was already there. And God has just surfaced is using that person. But the devil is the one who's come in there and sowing trash in your heart. Boy, you need to walk in forgiveness and walk in love right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. Because if you don't, you will bear no fruit. There will be no fruit for you. And because of that, the scriptures say, if you don't forgive somebody else, you will not be forgiven. And believe me, it could be a strong, could be a Christian that has been really serving the Lord and something's come in and it's changed their whole attitude towards people and towards the church. I've seen it. I've been saved since 1980. It's a long time. And ministering and pastoring since 88, I have seen that happen so many times. People get bitter and angry at someone else. Next thing you know, where are they? Or they might even be in church, but their attitudes changed. And so they're not ministering to the body of Christ any longer because they're carrying bitterness inside of their hearts. So, we've got to be careful about these three different types of hearts that's mentioned in the parable of the sower. Next week I'm going to talk about the good, the good ground and, and what does that mean and, and what is it and so forth. But let me pray with you right now because I believe and I feel in my heart that some of you watching this video right now or have an unforgiveness in your heart and you are letting these weeds come up to snuff out the plant 
the precious plant, the Word of God, okay? Father, I pray right now, Lord, for all these people that are listening. I believe that many of them that are listening are going through similar things that I talked about. And I pray for them right now, Lord, that they would go out to their gardens and in their heart and weed out these things by repenting and asking your forgiveness and calling those weeds just what they are. They are weeds. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And all you're going to do is harm someone else. All you're going to do is just is cause more problems in your life. Things are not going to work out until you walk in holiness and love. So I pray for all these that are listening. In Jesus' name, amen.